Hello and welcome to this short video. The purpose of this video is for me to reflect on where this channel is at this present moment in time. Let me first of all give you a little background uh, history to this channel. I started this channel about 14 years ago and I used it primarily as a vehicle for delivering multimedia content to my students. Up until two years ago, I taught at a local university and I was able to upload that to our learning platform for our students to use. I put the links up there so they could access them via YouTube. As I said, two years ago I retired and so I decided to keep and maintain the channel in order for me to provide content uh, outside the academic framework for me to have something to do in my retirement, something that I was used to and something that I enjoyed doing. So for the last two years, I have spent that time creating a home studio and it's been a interesting and rewarding journey for me looking at the different bits of hard and software technology that's available in order to be able to create stuff in, in a reasonable way in a home small room environment and I think I've been successful in that and that I've achieved a level of competency and skill to be able to present content uh, with the given technology there are a few gaps in that it's by no means perfect and so I then once I've, I've got to a phase now where I'm happy with the hardware I, I think I can deliver reasonable picture and sound but the problem I have is that I wasn't happy with um, the non-linear editor, the digital editing software, which was Adobe Premiere. I, I used that throughout my time at, uh, whilst I was teaching at the university that I was able to create that content, but it was very simple in that they were just linear slides with um, information on, and I would do the odd piece to camera where I talked about a particular concept, and that wasn't too, too problematic. And it was, it was formal in, in, in a sense that I was presenting a, a, a lecture rather than pre, uh, presenting content that originated for me that I wanted to do for, for purposes for my own enjoyment. So it was very functional in, in that sense. So I've got to the point now where I, I think I can do that. But I'd also in that time was trying to think of what would I like to do? What sort of content would I like to deliver? And therein lies the problem because I originally thought of doing things relating to uh, politics, science or religion or technology in some way. And in a small way, I have already done that because I've, I've uploaded small little snippets of the development of the studio. So if you look at my published content at the moment now, there are, I can't remember, there must have been about 10 or 15 videos of the little bits and pieces of technology that I've looked at over the time in developing the uh, over the time I was developing the studio and that's out there and I might provide more detail of that later on but I needed to get my teeth into something that would allow me to um, encourage me and allow me to actually deliver content by um, on a more frequent basis by by using what I'm doing to deliver what I'm doing if that makes sense and so because I, my major weakness is in editing, and in particular in having enough skill in a particular uh, editor, I needed to maybe move from Adobe Premiere into what I thought is probably one of the better ones out there. And because it had a free, there was free access to the base um, software of Adobe, uh, not Adobe, DaVinci Resolve, which is the one I started off with to, to move migrate over to, so I managed to get the full studio version because part of my hardware development was to look at a cinemagraphic camera like the um, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, which is the one I'm recording this on. The full studio version of DaVinci Resolve um, came with that, so I've now got that should I need to use it. The probability is I won't be using much of what's in the studio because uh, a huge percentage of its... Um, facilities and capabilities are embedded in the free version of it but that's beside the point at the moment so what I'm intending to do in order to encourage myself and push myself to produce more regular content because the, the amount of content I've, I've already delivered is very small and it's been infrequent so what I'm setting out to do is to learn the DaVinci Resolve software in particular learn the um, the color and the editing part of it 
the other elements of it, I'm not sure I want to delve into that, but I'm going to go through the learning curve. And what I'll do, as I learn new things about it, as I follow my own learning process, I will publish small, short pieces of content on that to encourage me to do that. So that's the direction of the channel. Let me also thank the fact that without sort of um, encouraging people to subscribe and click and whatever you normally do on YouTube, I've acquired something like 270, 280 subscribers, which I'd like to thank them for taking the time to do, do that and, and subscribe. And indeed, some of them have provided useful comments and feedback. And it, I must admit, it gives you a little, um, a do, uh, what is it, a dopamine hit when you get people uh, doing that. So it's nice to get that. I don't have to, in any sense, grow this in any large way because I'm not seeking to get a huge amount of subscribers per se, unlikely to do so, so but I'm not actually seeking it because I'm doing this as a hobby and for the fun rather than for any sort of income I, I want to earn from it. So it's just to keep me busy in my retirement, basically. So what I'm going to do now after this, I'm going to run a little video of something I've managed to acquire very recently on using DaVinci Resolve and hopefully that's a useful piece of content. So if you're still here and it's at the end of it, I really thank you for that because I know uh, sometimes it's difficult to watch uh, wafflers like me to the end and wait for the little bit of content that you want. I'll probably put a link to where this uh, little bit of content is to save the pain of people having to watch my little sort of um, sort of cathartic piece to camera. So that's it at the moment. So thanks again for staying to the end and I look forward to perhaps providing some little useful snippets of video across the board, hardware and software over the next uh, year or so if uh, I'm gifted with the time to do that. So bye for now. Okay, let's have a look at how we grab a still. You can only, as far as I know, grab a still in the color tab. So uh, navigating the color tab, it's possible then to grab a still. You can, uh, if you haven't got the clips or the timelines that are available, if you click on here, that'll bring your clips down and bring your timeline so you can actually see where you're going. I want to grab a still here on this clip. That top clip is this little icon at the bottom there, which I don't want to play with at the moment. Notice too, in, in the color section of this, you've got your, your nodes here within the, um, within this area here. So if I want to grab a still, I simply right click here, go to grab a still. And having grabbed a still, which is this one over here, I right click it and I will go to export it. So I'll export it out and I can export it out as various files. I'm going to export it out as a bitmap. No, I'll, I'll do it as a JPEG. So I'll call it, I'll call it the same as that uh, test 221 and I'll export it and I'll save it. So I've now got that saved as a JPEG. It's beyond the scope of this particular uh, demonstration. You're also in grabbing a still, you're also, if you look at the, if I look at this still here, you can see there's a different set of um, nodes within the, the color part here of the, uh, of this here. These no the nodes will relate to whatever is available within the individual nodes, how you've adjusted the color. As I say, that's beyond the scope at the moment now, but this is more powerful than just the still. It also embeds in it the uh, the nodes of of the of the particular clip that you're uh, altering the color on, and you can use that to copy and paste from one node to the next if you wish to do so. So that's basically it. It's no more difficult than that, and it's it's very simple to to use. I can save that to this area here or bring it into this area. So if I wanted that particular if I let me go to, let's just go back to here. I'll go back to media and I'll right click into the media and I'll import, I'll import that clip, that, that image. So I'll import media and it should be in there. So it was this 2-1 JPEG. So I'll import it there and there it is. So I can bring that uh, down as a still on the timeline should I wish to. You can see as I scan it there, it is a still. So that's it. Nothing more to say on that. It's uh, fairly simple and straightforward. Thanks for staying with this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope to post more content that might be useful. So you guys take care for now.